Okay, this video is on uh, shear flow. A couple things to note about shear flow. We're familiar with the equation. We're familiar with the equation. I'm going to go a different color. That shear flow is equal to VQ over I times thickness. Okay, so what we're going to do in this case is you're going to multiply everything by thickness. So I multiply this by thickness, multiply this by thickness. The thickness will cancel out, and what you're left with is called shear flow, and it's generally denoted by the symbol Q. So Q is equal to the thickness times the shear, or it's equal to VQ over I. Okay, when you're dealing with fasteners, then what you can think about is if you take this shear, and we know, for example, its units would be in newtons per meter squared, and you multiply it by thickness that is in meters, obviously the meters here will, will cancel out. And you notice here, you're left with newtons per meter. So shear flow is in a force per meter. When you're dealing with fasteners, if you multiply that by the pitch, and the pitch again will be in units of meters, that the meters again will cancel out, and look what you're left with is the force, and that is the force that each fastener is going to carry. Okay, we're going to apply this uh, to the same thing. Now you could also come back to this equation and say, well, if I take V Q over I and I just multiply that by the pitch of the fasteners, I will also get the force that each fastener will carry. All right, let's look at a problem. Um, these problems are taken from the book, but you have a beam constructed from four boards glued together, subjected to a shear of 850 kilonewtons. You want to determine the shear flow at B and C that must be resisted by the glue. All right, do the problem exactly like uh, you've done before. We're going to come to this problem and we're going to find first where the Y bar is going to be. Now if you f work through this uh, problem and again do it just like you've always done, just set yourself a neutral um, a starting point and just m multiply the product, I'm sorry, calculate the product of its w the Y bar and the area of each one of these, add them together, divide it by the total area. What I believe you'll get is you'll get a Y bar of about 0.1968 meters. All right. So now what we're going to do is calculate the moment inertia, and do it just like you did. You have to do the parallel axis theorem for each one of these cross sections, and you'll get a value of approximately like that. All right. Now, to find the shear flow around B, you're going to look at just you're looking for this joint here. In this joint here. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate what the shear flow would be of, the, of this of these beam right here. Okay, and calculating your Q values, what we're looking for here, we're going to get a different pin. We're going to find the Q value of just this cross section here. So to do that, that's going to be 250 times 10 times the distance. And let me back up here the distance from here all the way down to the neutral axis. So I take 250 times point, uh, sorry, point 0.250 times point 0.01. That's the area of this section right here. I multiply it times this uh, moment arm, which is the distance from the neutral axis up to here, which gives me point 0.305 minus point 0.1968. Okay, so that's just Y bar times the area. And I get this value here. I do the same thing for C. I calculate this area here, which in this case would be 125 times 10, or 0.125 times 0.010. Okay, multiply it by the distance from its cent uh, neutral, excuse me, its centroid back to the uh, neutral axis. I got that value right there. Now to find um, the shear flow, we just do VQ over I. You take V, which is the shear of the beam seen, multiply it by Q, divide it by the total moment inertia, 
and you get 262 mega newtons per meter. Again, that's going to be the sh shear flow around here and here. Now, on this case, you have two surfaces you're trying to shear across. You're shearing across here and shear across here. So just divide that by two. So the shear flow would be 1.31 mega newtons per meter across here and across here. Now to do C, you do the same thing, VQ over I, use the shear times the Q value we calculated divided by the total moment inertia, and you'll get this. Again, you got two surfaces you're trying to shear across, so you can divide that by two, and that would give you a value of 0.0498 meganewtons per meter. All right, let's look at another problem. Um, this is the box beam. Um, here, it's a good one because we have fasteners. Each nail can support a shear force of 30 newtons. Determine the maximum spacing S at B and C so that the beam will support a vertical force of 80 newtons. Okay, well this one we don't need to figure out where the um, Y bar is going to be or the neutral axis because this thing is going to be right in the middle. We can tell by looking. So first thing to do is go ahead and figure out what your uh, moment inertia is. And here we got 229.5. Uh, okay, to do your Q value. Um, Q of B, we want to see out what would be the Q value across here. Now this is a little confusing because um, we're going to try to find out what the Q value would be across here. To do that, you're going to figure out what this total Q area right here, not just this piece right here. You're going to find out what the total would be here because we want to find out what the shear flow is across here. So we take the whole length, 7.5, multiply it by 1.5, and then multiply it by the distance from here to here. That gives me 7.5 times 1.5 times 3. It gives me 33.75. Now to do C, again, you're trying to shear across uh, this area right across here where that nail is. So we'll just split that, and we'll come down here, and we want to find out what the shear would be here. All right, to do that, again, this is, I think, a little complex or confusing, is you want to figure out what is the uh, area across here. What are you shearing across? So in this case, the Q value is going to be 4.50 times my thickness, 1.5, times the distance from here to here, because you're just looking at this piece here. All right, and you get that, and you're going to get 20.25. OK. So now let's see what we can do. So now I go back and we find out what the Q shear flow would be at B and at B at C. So the shear flow at B would be the shear that each faster can carry, which is 80 times 33.75 divided by the moment inertia. That gives me 11.76 newtons per centimeter. We do it for C. We get VQ. We get this, again, times this Q value, which is 20.25 divided by the moment inertia give us 7.05 newtons per centimeter, centimeter. All right, so we can go back what we said in the very beginning that VQ over I times pitch is equal to the force in each faster. So if we want to solve for pitch, we just take pitch We set that equal to force, and we divide that by VQ over, over I, or divide that by Q. That will get our pitch. So to find out what the pitch of each faster is, we take the force that each faster can, can carry, and we divide it by the Q value. So here I took 30, I divide it by 11.76. That tells me the pitch that I can, that I will have it be. I do the same thing at C. I take the force at each faster. I divide it by the Q value here. That will tell me the pitch at C. All right, let's look at one more. Okay, in this problem, you have nails having a total shear strength of 40 newtons are used in a beam that can be constructed either in case one or in case two. The nails are spaced at nine centimeters. Determine the largest vertical shear that can be supported in each case so the fasteners will not fail. All right, in case A, what you're going to do in case A would be, let's draw a line here, is you're going to look and see what happens if you sh shears across here. So to do that, 
what you're going to do is you're going to find the Q value based upon this area here. Okay, over here, you have it set up so it's going to shear across here. Okay. So if that's the case, all you're going to do is you're going to let this part be your Q value. All right, so we'll go to the problem. And you notice, first thing I do, found the moment inertia, just like we've always done. And now the first scenario, I found out what the Q value was. So I got 225 times 3 times 0.5. So let me tell you where that, show you where that came from. I, the Q value, I take 3 times 0.5 times the distance from here back to the centroid. That's where these numbers came. That gave me a value of 3.375. Now I go back to the other one, and I got 1 times 0.5 times, times 2.25. All right, the Q value of this would be that it's one wide, it's 0.5 thick, and then I multiply that by the distance from here up to here, and that gives me, there's the Y bar times that area, it gives me 3.375. All right, again, when you get to this point here, we got Q. So again, we know that we take Q. If we multiply it by the pitch, we will get the force. So we know that if we take the force and we divide it by the pitch, we will get the Q value. Okay, so at VQ over I is equal to, excuse me, times pitch, what we did before, is equal to force. So I'll come back over here, and all I have to do now is say that the force across each faster divided by the pitch is equal to VQ over I. So on this, I take the force, I divide it by the pitch, just like I'm doing here, and I'm set it equal to VQ over I, and now all I have to solve for V, and V, in this case, would be 27.1 Newtons. Again, not too bad. Just keep coming back to this when you're dealing with fasteners and shear flow.